Hello, this is Mr. White, and this video is on graphing the trig functions other than sine and cosine of x. So remember that sine and cosine of x are considered sinusoids, and these other four trig functions, their graphs are not considered sinusoids. In this video, we're going to bring your attention to tangent and secant, and I'm going to hope that the way that, uh, that we approach tangent and secant, I'm going to hope that on your own you can have a sense of what to do about the remaining two. We will spend time in class discussing those and, and deepening our knowledge here, but I invite you to, to tackle it on your own even before we discuss it in class. So this is getting into chapter 4.5 in the current edition of our book, page 398. And by now, this should look fairly familiar. Uh, these unit circle problems, um, which you should be able to evaluate fairly quickly without a calculator by now. Uh, and if I get the secant ones off the screen here, um, I've already done the answers in here for you. That's not the point of this video. Um, but you hopefully are anticipating what I'm going to do next since we're talking about graphing. If I highlight these values and I highlight these values, do you see where I'm going with this? If you're thinking, hey, I bet Mr. White is going to use those angles as x values, and the actual value, tangent of those angles, as the y values, you would be absolutely correct. That is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to bring this pre-printed graph here up on the screen. Uh, get rid of those circles just because they're getting in my way. Uh, but again, I'm going to use those uh, um, values that you see here as x and y values. So if I start with those three and just graph those three, I would get points here, here, and here. And pause the video if you need to to verify that you agree with me. But those are those first three points. And as far as what I'm going to do about, I'm sorry, not the first three, those are the middle three points. And as far as what I'm going to do about the first and the fifth value, you may think, oh, well, if it's undefined, I can't graph anything. But I ask you to consider why they're undefined. Consider that tangent of negative pi over 2, if you, if you think of its opposite and its adjacent, it would be like negative 1 over 0, and, and tangent of pi over 2 would be positive 1 over 0. And I ask you to think about earlier in the course, whenever we had a, a function that was a fraction and that and encountered a 0 in the denominator, do you remember what feature we saw graphically? Typically, that was an asymptote, right? A vertical asymptote. So guess what? This situation is no different. Let me move those out of the way. And Again, we can, we can deepen this conversation in class, but for right now, for keeping this video from getting too long, I'm going to ask that you just trust that there's an asymptote here. And even better, don't just trust it. Think about it and hopefully convince yourself that that makes sense. But I'm going to claim that if we were to continue filling in points, and again, I repeat, we will build on this in class, but hopefully it's not hard to believe that the graph would look something like that. And that if I were to continue for more um, graphs outside, or more points outside of quarter one, I'm sorry, quadrant one and quadrant four. I hope that sounds familiar, that pointing out, looking at these uh, sections on the xy plane as quadrants. Remember how this is quadrant two, this would be quadrant three. I hope that sounds familiar to you. But if I continue into those other quadrants, this should not surprise you, and I, and I would suggest you turn to page 398 in the current edition of our book, the sixth edition, if that's what we're still using. Um, turn to page 398 and study that a bit and, and just make sure you agree with everything that you see there. And realize that just like sine and cosine, the tangent graph does repeat itself infinitely far to the right and to the left for that matter. However, one thing you should notice here is that the, um, the period of the tangent function is not the same as the period of the uh, sine and cosine graphs, at least when I'm referring to the basic functions. So um, this is another thing that I encourage you to explore, um, at least as of this, the, the recording of this video. I have this GeoGebra animation on the class website. And I encourage you to explore what happens, um, whether you decide to look at tangent as the ratio of, uh, of this blue line segment over this red line segment, the ratio of opposite over um, adjacent, and if you study what's happening to the ratio. What happens 
at a, at a point like this where the blue segment is relatively long compared to the red segment. And as I approach vertical, what's happening to that? That should really bring some insight into why the tangent graph looks the way that it does. Um, and likewise, I'll remind you that if you just turn on the, the magenta segment here, that also is recording the ratio of those two other segments. And I ask you to, to, to again, really explore this on your own, but notice as I, as I do a full turn around the unit circle, notice that the behavior repeats itself twice. So look at what the magenta line just did over in rotating through pi radians, and notice that it's going to do exactly the same thing as I rotate through another pi radians. And because of that, two full cycles and, and a full two pi radian turn, that is why the period of tangent is pi, or the basic function at least, not 2 pi. That's a major point. I know I just kind of went through it real quickly there to try to keep the video from getting too long, but we'll build on that in class, and that's one you're going to want to ask questions on if you don't understand why that is. All right, so let's take that, that basic knowledge there um, and, and start jumping into this, uh, uh, into this example, where we are asked to describe the graph of the function y equals negative tangent 2x plus 3 in terms of the basic trig function. Um, and we're asked to locate the vertical asymptotes and graph four periods. Uh, I'm going to move some of those words off the screen just to clear myself a little bit of room, but ask that you kind of keep that goal in mind, what we're being asked to do. And as I move it off screen. And real quickly, we should be very comfortable with us by now. I'm going to pop those uh, um, onto the screen here, those transformations. This is a reflection across the x-axis, that negative sign in front. The two there is a horizontal counterintuitively shrink by one half. And the plus three on the end is a translation up three units. All right, so I'm going to start, again, I probably do this differently than, than a lot of teachers would do, but I find it beneficial to start by just graphing the basic function y equals tangent of x. And rather than memorize anything, I ask that you recall where is tangent going to be um, undefined? In other words, where is tangent going to give me this vertical asymptote? And hopefully you can recall, oh, it's undefined at pi over 2. That's why I have a, uh, an asymptote at pi over 2. And it's also undefined at negative pi over 2. And if I were to start getting into coterminal angles, it is not undefined at pi, which would be right here, but it is undefined again at 3 pi over 2, which is coterminal with negative pi over 2, right? 3 pi over 2 is coterminal with negative 3 pi over 2, or negative pi over 2. And likewise, negative pi is fine here, but at negative 3 pi over 2, tangent is undefined. That's coterminal with pi over 2. So again, I'm trusting by now that your unit circle knowledge is strong enough to, to follow what I'm saying. Um, that is for the basic function y equals tangent of x. But consider that this function got horizontally shrunk by 1 half. So I could try to redraw that, and I could try to shrink all those those uh, uh, asymptotes in closer to the y-axis. Uh, again, I could bring this asymptote. That gets horizontally shrunk along with the rest of the graph. I could bring that in and bring the one over here. I could try to bring that one in closer. But you know what? Rather than redraw everything, we're deciding the scale of this drawing. So why don't we just change the scale? We'll imagine that it got brought in, but then we'll say, if it got brought in, this pi over 2 would be shrunk down to pi over 4, right? So I don't know about you, but I'm in favor of just saying, why don't I just call that pi over 4? This will be 3 pi over 4 to the right here. Uh, we'll do the same things to the ones on the left here. Negative pi over 4, negative 3 out pi over 4. Pause this, let it soak in, listen to it again if you need to. This is a huge point that you need to get. That is where my asymptotes are. All right, um, let me consider the reflection across the x-axis now. 
So when I drew the basic function a moment ago, um, I drew three points, and I often like to draw those three points and draw the tangent like that. But if I flip it across the x-axis, the points are going to look like this. And my graph is going to look more like that. Not my best work of art, but you know what? It's good enough for, for, for what we're doing here. Um, and one last thing. Let's go ahead and take care of that moving it up by 3. So take those points that I just drew, uh, move them up by 3. I think it's going to be easier if I move the points up. 1, 2, 3. And then I'll move this to fit it. I have that luxury with the smart board, and you'll just have to kind of plan around that while drawing on your graph paper. Um, but it should look something like that. And if I were to repeat that into the other quadrants, or into the other uh, little intervals there, I would get something that looks kind of like this. I'm going to make sure I don't make any sloppy errors here, which I have been rumored to do in previous videos. It would look something like that. So I'm not going to judge you on your artwork, but I do need to see that you've clearly shown where the asymptotes are. And um, again, I, I, I ask that you draw those points, at least where the origin used to be. And again, those other two points, I think, are often good ones to start with. But once you've drawn those points that I'm circling here, and you've drawn the asymptotes, I think you'll find that it's not tremendously hard to just fill in the rest of that. OK? Let's go on to example number two. What does a secant graph look like? And for that one, I'm going to say that let's start with asking what does this cosine graph look like? And let's remind ourselves that this is the reciprocal of cosine, and that's why I'm asking that question. But if I start with y equals cosine of x, um, here, let's color code that differently. Let me make that one green here. Um, or actually, you know what? Make, let me make it red because I've already gotten something pre-made here. Here we go. All right, save myself a little time. Um, again, you should be pretty comfortable by now drawing the cosine wave. And if you look at how I have it drawn here, I must have my scale. This must be 1. This must be negative 1, right? Because this is the basic graph. And likewise, this right here would be 2 pi, because that is one full period of the cosine wave. Let me draw that a little thicker. That is one full period of the cosine wave. And that's why I'm labeling 2 pi where I am. This would be 4 pi, and so on. Now, here's the thinking I'm going to um, suggest for the cosine graph. Keep in mind that if I were to then say, if I were to look at secant, it is just the reciprocal of cosine, right? So I'm going to suggest, think of what happens when you take the reciprocal of the y values that you see on the screen here. Um, and this one you may have to pause, think about it, and, and let it soak in. I ask you, what is the y value right here? And I trust you would say 1. So the reciprocal of 1 is 1, right? No big surprises. Um, but consider what about this point right here? What is that y value? Well, the reciprocal is going to be 1 over 0. That, that, that y value is 0, and so the reciprocal is going to be 1 over 0, right? That means we must have an asymptote here. Now, to keep the video from getting terribly long, I hope I'm not making a mistake in doing this, but I'm going to, again, just try to keep this br as brief as possible and say that's 1 over 0. Um, down here, the y value is negative 1. The reciprocal is also negative 1, so I'll just leave that blue point where it is. But I'm doing this kind of thinking here. I want to at least just prime your brain for it. And if you have questions, if we need to continue that in class, we may, um, as always, of course, come to office hours, too, um, would be a, a good idea. But if I were to just do, if, let me do one more of those. Obviously, I could go on forever. But um, here's another y value of 1, and the reciprocal is also 1. A y value of negative 1, and the reciprocal is also negative 1, and so on. Uh, but let's look at one of the points in between before I start filling in the blanks here. How about uh, this point right here? Okay, and just make sure you see which one I'm talking about. I'm talking about this point that I'm moving right here. Its y value is 1 half right now, right? So if I take the reciprocal, the y value changes to 
2. And on the scale that I have right now, that's where 2 would be. What about this y value right here? It's at negative 1 half, right? So the reciprocal would be negative 2, and so on. And if I were to keep filling in those reciprocals, a picture, I believe, starts to emerge. And believe it or not, for as many years as I've been doing this, this is the process I still go through in my head to, to start to figure out what cosine looks like. I find that easier and just you know, something that I think I'll retain better than, than memorizing. So based on that kind of thinking, the secant graph is going to look like this. Very interesting looking graph. This is one of those cases where I'd say if, if it helps to graph that on your calculator, to visualize it, to check your work, by all means do so. But uh, you will not use the calc, will not really. All right, so here I've uh, uh, filled in the rest of the graph and I, I dimmed the cosine graph a little bit. Um, and that is what a secant graph would look like. I'm going to leave it up to you to, to think about how you would handle the transformations. Uh, let me go ahead and say this is a fairly difficult topic. Um, and it's not even difficult, I would say, as much as, as I would say it just takes practice. So here are a couple to practice with. I hope I provided you enough to, to, to tackle that. If not, you know what to do. Uh, pause the video at this time. I'll show the answers here in just a moment. All right, um, completing those problems and showing everything that, that's been asked of you, it's gonna be a little bit jumbled here, so I ask that you pause, take your time, make sure you agree with everything here. Um, those are my uh, values there, uh, um, my graph, and in red here I have the asymptote values. I really should be more formal about it and say, there are the asymptotes. Um, and notice I did the dot, 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 and I apologize, I didn't really show that in the, um, in the example, but the dot, dot, dot here and here um, imply that it goes on forever to the left and to the right. Uh, and for the other one, uh, the secant graph, there it is with the transformations shown. I'll point out here that just like right here is one full cycle of the cosine wave, um, which has been vertically, I'm sorry, horizontally shrunk by one third. Notice that that is why its period is 2 pi divided by 3 because of the horizontal shrinking by one third. And let me bring the asymptotes on the screen. There they are. Uh, again, give yourself some time to get used to this. Uh, this is a tough topic, and come on by if you had any trouble with it.